All right, folks. It's been a long time. How's it going? I had for a while delisted all my videos publicly because um, I was afraid that some people were going to see them. Um, I'm no longer afraid, so I guess I can just jump right into it here. You might have remembered from previous videos, I had said that um, there was a cashier that I was uh, crushing on. I hadn't made an update about this situation in a long time. Um, I had said that I was probably never going to talk to her or see her again. And lo and behold, she came back to work another temp assignment, which initially had me excited to see her again. And um, <clears throat> so she came back, and not long after she came back, it was revealed that she had broken up with her boyfriend. And so that was exciting, you know. It almost felt like in my... this is I built a very ridiculous fantasy around this girl. Um, so she was... She didn't have a boyfriend, and uh, that meant, oh, she must have, you know, some in my mind, I'm like, oh, she must have come back to work for the co-op again, because she said she wasn't going to come back. She said she was going to stay up where her school was, but she came back, and so I was like, oh, she must be coming back because, you know, she wants to see me again, and now that she's available, you know, I have an opportunity here. Um, and, you know, again, there's a lot of silliness in this fantasy because I am 44 and she's 20. She was 19 before, now she's 20, I guess. Um, so, we worked together for a while and I, again, I was, you know, it's so funny how easy it is to misconstrue things. Maybe this girl's just a flirt. She likes to mess with people. Maybe she, you know, pretty girls generally like to mess with people's heads. I don't know, maybe she didn't see herself as flirting. Maybe she just saw herself as being nice. But there were things that I was reading too much into. I think this is an important note to start off this video is, if you're interested in a girl, definitely, you know, if you think that she's passing you hints that she's interested, um, you know, really consider the situation before you make assumptions, you know. Um, I always just thought maybe because I was this girl's boss and, and because, um, you know, she kept coming back to the co-op and somehow she was coming back for me and, you know, I don't know. I thought that I was, I imagined that she was giving me looks. I imagined that she was, um, you know, that she might have been interested in me. I don't know why. She was kept, anything she said that even remotely hinted at the possibility that she might be interested in and what she said this time that that made me, you know, there were there were things that she said that, again, when you're when you're on this mode of being starry-eyed for a girl, and they can say things that you know have no meaning whatsoever, and you can really easily construe them as oh she's passing me a message, you know, she's letting me know she's interested. And that happened with a lot of things she said um, when in the first couple of weeks back. Um, <clears throat> she said. Um, you know, I was complaining about how old I was, and she was saying, oh, you're not, you know, you look very youthful. I immediately, I construed that as a message. Oh, you know, she says, oh, you're, you're very youthful. So I thought, oh, that, this must be a sign that she's trying to tell me that I'm not too old to hit on her, you know. And um, at one point she mentioned, oh, my dad's much older than you, and she emphasized much. I'm like, oh, she must be trying to let me know that, you know, that old line about, oh, I'm old enough to be your dad doesn't apply in our situation, so, you know, so I have a shot. Um and, you know, she's just generally very complimentary of me, you know, in a general setting. Um, but people can be complimentary of you, and it doesn't mean any kind of, you shouldn't infer any kind of romantic attraction from that. Um, one night, I was working late with her, and she was saying how she had to go shopping because she was going to be watching a movie with her friend later. And then she came back to the checkout stand and said, you know, I was... You know, I was about to, I'm so disappointed because my friend just called and said that, or texted or something and said that she's not going to be able to make it tonight. And in my mind, again, you know, with my fantasy turning the wheels dangerously, I thought, oh, this must mean that she's making a place for me to step in for her friend here. Now she's bought all this stuff. She doesn't have anyone to watch the movie with. You know, she must be wanting me to watch the movie. Now, you know, I didn't step into that place because I was like, I don't have a place. If 
fight at a place of my own that I could invite her back to. I'd be like, well, if you want, I'll watch the movie with you. And I'll eat your food. You know, I could have made a joke out of it. And that would have could have been effective. <clears throat> but I didn't say those things because, um, because I don't have a place of my own. And I'm certainly not going to, as a 44-year-old man, invite a 20-year-old girl back to my parents' house. You know, because that will quickly kill any illusions that she might have had about me. So I didn't say anything, and, you know, that, it was, it's like, I really, that night, I mean, I don't know, that night she really might have, you know, maybe it was, maybe it's, it's, it's not, I still want to believe that somehow she was interested in me at that point, because that night, you know, she walked out with me, she waited for me to, I mean, when we closed the night together, we walked out together down to the parking lot, and um, she just seemed to, you know, want to be with me for those last few minutes, and I was under the assumption maybe she's waiting for me to make my move now, you know, and I didn't. Um, I just said goodnight, you know, that was it, and we were on our way, and, you know, maybe I lost her at that point, you know, and some part of my brain likes to think that she was still interested in me, and that I lost her when, when she opened the door for, for us to hang out, and, 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 and I didn't, but I really, you know, looking back on it now, I, I, I my, deep down, I feel like that, that, I, I had never had her in the first place, that this was just me reading a lot of things into, you know, something that was just, uh, innocent, sort of, uh, you know, she was just telling me what was going on, you know, it, it wasn't meant to be an open invitation or anything like that, as far as I can tell, so anyway, um, then another day, I was, um, she had to go to the bathroom, and she's like, I, I gotta go, and I'm, I'm the ship leader, she's a cashier, so she has to tell me, you know, what she, so I was like, where are you going, because generally I'm supposed to know what the cashiers are doing, so that they don't leave the floor for no apparent reason, you know, so they at least have to come up with an excuse every time they go. And she said, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to the bathroom. Is that okay? And I'm like, oh, yeah. And she's like, well, why do you want to come to the bathroom with me? She said that, you know. And that was like, what? You know, I was like, I was helping a customer at the time, so I couldn't really, you know, say too much. And I was just like, oh, my God, why would she say that? You know, like, that was like quite a comment to make, I thought. And I was like, you know. She's like, do you want to, so she said, do you want to come to the bathroom with me? And it was like, I was like, oh, well, you know, I don't think they're going to let me in there. You know, there's a women's and men's room upstairs, you know, so I was like, and then she said like, oh, no, they'll let you in or something like that, you know, and then she ended up leaving. But I thought that, I really thought that that comment about wanting to go to the bathroom was like a reference to, you know, what people sometimes do, go off and get it on in the bathroom, you know, it's the wilder fantasies that sometimes, you know, we have. You've heard that. That's a fantasy that people, it's an old trope. It's a fantasy of getting it on with a girl in the bathroom. Um, but, you know, I was busy with a customer, and, you know, I doubt she was serious about that. Who the hell knows? Maybe if I was a wilder guy, I don't know. You know, I certainly the way it, it, it shook out in the end it doesn't seem like it, because, you know, I decided just, you know, basically, like, we were... One thing I noticed is, you know, so I thought, I was really under the impression that maybe she was passing signals, you know, she's still giving me smiles and still occasionally looking at me, you know, she'd look at me and just smile and look at me, and I thought, you know, this, this seems to mean something, you know, she, why is she smiling at me, you know, why was she looking, I'd catch her looking at me, like, why is she looking at me, so, but I didn't say anything um, for a while, and I was, uh, you know, she started in, I think, mid-May or something like that, maybe early May, and so initially, I thought I was going to have all of May, June, and all of July, three whole months, to be working with her. And I was super excited about that, just to, you know, because it meant I was going to get to be around her, you know, for my job. And uh, right before she actually came back, they had had, um, they were, my, both my managers were moving to different places. My assistant manager was moving to the other store, we have two stores, my co-op. And my assistant manager was moving to the other store, and my the overall customer service manager was promoted to be the ops manager. So both of those positions were open, and I decided I'd been working pretty hard, and you know I wanted to either f figure out if they were wanted me to be management material or or not. You know, so I applied for both of those jobs. I've been putting a lot of work in. I felt like I've been doing a pretty good job, and um, I didn't end up, you know. I worked with Lucy, oh, sorry, I shouldn't even say her name, anyway, whatever, if she sees this, she already knows what I'm talking about her, um, so I worked with her for a couple of weeks while I waited for them to make their decision, and it was nice, you know, but it was, you know, like I said, I, there may have been, uh, uh, what I was at least imagining were opportunities I wasn't really taking, and so there was a possibility that I, you know, 
because I wasn't super confident, didn't act immediately, maybe because she had some fantasy about being with her boss. I mean, I don't think so. Again, from my perspective now, it was just that it was all innocent and I was reading too much into every last little thing. You never know, but that's my vibe. Of course, it could be that I just wasn't, you know, forceful enough or I wasn't confident enough to, to take action sooner. That's always a possibility, I suppose. But, you know, I think she was just having some fun. You know, maybe she was flirting a little bit, you know, but without it ever expecting to go anywhere. Um, anyway, um, I didn't get the job. Um, they gave the jobs to other people. The major customer service manager was an outside hire, and the assistant manager was somebody who'd been at the co-op longer than I had, and really a decent amount of time, like years longer than I had, and probably deserved the job more than I did just for just for that. You know, they'd been working there a long time. They did a pretty well, pretty good job. Really, I don't know how great of a job they were doing, but they were there long enough to have done the, you know, been doing, you know, I, I, I didn't really have any position to evaluate the person doing the job. They seemed like they were doing a decent job. I couldn't really tell them. But, um, so I didn't get either position. And I just felt like, well, you know, I'm kind of done with this job. I'm, I'm stagnating, you know. I'll have to wait another several years to become a manager. I never really wanted to be a manager in the first place. You know, it's time that I just get out of here. And it was hard because, you know, I knew that it meant leaving a girl that, you know, I thought potentially had interest in me, you know, probably the last girl under the age of 30, you know, who I thought had at least shown some potential interest in me because that's not really, it's not really realistic for a man my age to have even a shot with somebody under the age of 30 or really under the age of 29 or something like that. That's like this is a half plus seven, right? It's about 29, I think. Um, you know, for me to have a, a shot with a girl that young, the only way it's going to happen is for someone to kind of fall in love with my personality by, you know, repeated exposure to me. And so this girl had had enough exposure to me. I thought maybe my personality was enough was, and had won her over, you know. She, she seemed to respect me as a, as a worker. I always tried very hard. But... Um, so when I left, you know, I, I was kind of like, but I was in a position where, you know, when I said that I wanted to leave, I mean, I was resentful at management for, for you know, passing me over, even though their their decision seems justified. But there's also just a general lack of respect at, at my co-op for the rank and file workers. And I got kind of tired of living in that world where, you know, they kept adding responsibilities, you know, without understanding the consequences, without seeking any feedback about those things. And just seemed like my job was getting harder and harder and harder. They just kept adding tasks and making it more difficult. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I tend to be a good worker and I, you know, I pick up for other people's slack and other people who make the slack were just making more and more slack because they saw that I was willing to take all the crap that they put out. And so, you know, and I was unable to be forceful as a, as a shift leader and force people to do things that I wasn't, I didn't have a strong enough, you know, force of personality or as a leader to, get people to buy in. I don't know if anyone could have bought in because my managers weren't very good at disciplining people when they weren't doing the right thing. Um, it was just a general lack of organization. I didn't think my managers, and my managers were okay. They didn't do a terrible job, but, you know, it, it made for a, a less stressful work environment in terms of they weren't micromanaging and they weren't, you know, quick to to punish you for anything. But um, it was a tough situation to be forceful as a you know, as a ship leader, and so a lot of times I could only lead by example, and it didn't seem like anyone was interested in following my example of putting in really hard work all the time because people just felt unappreciated in the job. They weren't getting paid enough, and they felt like management didn't respect them, which they don't. So um, anyway, I got tired of having to toil under a management that didn't respect me. I'm sure it's the same at every retail job. I'm sure management doesn't respect the retail reports. They see us all as replaceable, you know. They don't really see any point in going out of their way to try to keep people because, you know, they'll just find someone else who can do the job almost as well, and, you know, it, to them it's worth the, having the turnover, you know, they probably were happy that I quit because I was, I had already started, been earning more money than another shift leader would, so it's probably worth them the less, the dollar less they'd be paying the new person since I had, had um, you know, I'd had enough time logged that I'd already gotten a raise, and they're probably happy to not have to pay that raise anymore. I'm sure someone else will do the job that I was doing almost as well, although in some ways I think I would work, I, I'm probably a harder worker than whoever they replace it with, but we'll see. Anyway, um, so yeah, I knew I was going to be leaving. Um, that's a lot of shop talk that you're probably not interested in, but 
getting back to the juicy details. So I knew I was leaving. I knew I wasn't. I was making a decision not to spend an entire month and a half with a girl that I really admired, and you know, I'm trying to get this. I got him. Fuck. Sorry, a little mosquito there. Um. So yeah, I knew I would be missing an opportunity to be with one of the last young girls that I thought had any kind of any potential interest with me. It probably wasn't as much interest as I'd imagined, but anyway, um, so, uh, so I, I figured, well, if I'm going to leave, you know, maybe this means I can, you know, maybe this means I can finally man up and, and ask her, you know, if she'd want to go out with me sometime. And right after I would sort of like put in my two weeks notice, you know, I let her know that I was going to be going, and she sent me a text saying, oh, what are you, are you still going to keep going to trivia? I go to trivia nights, she so you're still going to go to trivia, and, you know, asking me what happened and why I quit. You know, we were, we had a text, we were having texting conversations because I had gotten her number through our trivia group, like I mentioned in a previous video. Um, and so, she knew me well enough to reach out to me and ask me questions about me quitting, you know. So that made me feel comfortable, and I thought, well, maybe, you know, she, if she's, interested enough to text me maybe she you know, maybe she does have some feeling for me who the hell knows you know so i thought well you know this you know i've said I, i've passed every opportunity i had you know but she came into the store you know not long after i put my notice in she was just gorgeous just wore this blue shirt that brought out the blue in her eyes and and it was like a some kind of bare midriff type of shirt, you know, a halter top or something like that, I don't know, and she just looked so beautiful, and I thought, you know, I've got to say something, you know, I, if I don't say something at some point, um, you know, I'll regret it forever, you know, i got to find out if there's any mutual interest here whatsoever, so, you know, I didn't want to say anything until the last possible day, you know, my dad told me I should have just asked her out, you know, one of the nights, you know, that I worked, that we both worked till 8 p.m. or something, or close to it, you know, he said better not to hesitate, but I, I didn't want to make for an awkward situation at work at all, and so I decided to wait, you know, and I wasn't even sure if I was going to say anything up to the last minute, um, you know, last night, you know, today was our last day together uh, on the job, and, she, well, you know, there was, there were signs that she wasn't particularly interested in me, because, she hadn't come to trivia night at all. She came one time months ago, back in December, and that was it. You know, she kept saying she was going to go, but she never actually came. Never responded to the group text on the trivia thread. Um, and then she kept wanting to leave early. She um, went home early one day, which with what seemed like she told me when she got in that she didn't want to be there, and she kind of manufactured food poisoning. I think she maybe she wasn't lying. Maybe she had some stomach issues. She said she threw up, but. That's an easy way to get out of work is you go upstairs for a while, stay in the bathroom, then come down, say you threw up, you know. There's usually no one in the bathroom, so you can just stay in there for a while and then come out and say you threw up, and they let you have the rest of the day off, you know. And that's a common way to get out of work if you really want to. So, you know, the day we were working together, it was like within an hour of, of her being there. She said, oh, you know, I threw up in the bathroom. I got to go home. And she was, and she said, oh, it was just a 24-hour sickness, she told me the next day. So usually those 24-hour sicknesses are more questionable than others. But basically it was just like, you know, it was a vibe like she didn't value our time together, you know. And then this week, I was, tomorrow was supposed to be our last day together. We were supposed to close together, which would have given me a much better opportunity to kind of pick my time and, you know, and really find a spot to really talk to her. But um, but she switched with my coworker so that she wouldn't have to work tomorrow. So just repeatedly, you know, her actions said that she didn't really care about our relationship, didn't care about spending time with me, wasn't interested in maximizing the time she spent with me. And I thought maybe I was reading too much into that, too, and maybe she liked me more than I realized. I don't know. But, so I thought to myself, you know, last night I was pondering, do I say something, do I not? And my, you know, my friend, I have a friend on the West Coast, and he was saying, you know, do you really think you have a realistic shot with her? And I told him my history and that we had texted each other and that I'd gotten to know her and I enjoyed talking with her and we had pretty good conversations and I didn't feel, you know, awkward talking to her, which is pretty rare for me and a pretty girl, you know. I felt natural with her, so I thought it was, this was the first opportunity where I really thought maybe there's a chance, you know, that she'll be interested, and my friend said, oh, you know, if you're going to do this, this is going to be the long game, this isn't going to be the short game, you know, he's like, if, 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 if there's any chance that she's going to be interested in, you know, 
in you, it'll be because you spend more time together at a, a group type of function where she gets to know you even better and finds that she's really attracted to you. And, you know, I feel like that made sense to some extent, but on the other side of it, you know, I'm old and getting older and, you know, I'm still, even though I'm middle-aged, I'm more youthful now than I'll ever be, you know. So it's harder to imagine dating a girl who's very young as time goes on. And in my mind, you know, she there was so little communication with me and her just in the day-to-day, -day, aside from when I told her that I was quitting. You know, she wasn't texting me regularly. I wasn't texting her regularly. She would only really text when there was some catalyst to, to, to text about things. So, um... So, um... So, yeah, um, you know, his idea was, you know, I, I felt like, you know, I was getting too old to even have a shot within a few years because I'll start looking too old for her to even entertain the possi the idea that I still look youthful, youthful enough to, to be with her, you know. Um, I thought that if I waited any longer, my chances would only get worse. And I also thought that me not making a move, not, not declaring my interest in some way, would make me look weak. And, um, you know, that she would have, want to have nothing to do with me if I didn't say something before the end of our time together. So... I told myself I was going to say something, you know, even in spite of my friend's advice, you know, I thought, well, better to say something, look like a creep, but at least, you know, know for sure, you know, know for sure, not wonder, or if, well, I wonder if I'd said something, you know, because the chances that we were going to be able to hang out in a group setting were not good anyway, she, you know, she said again today that she was going to go to trivia, but she keeps saying that over and over. She says, well, I would, you know, and I was like, well, you don't really have to go to trivia if you don't like it. And she goes, well, I love trivia. The only thing is that, you know, I, I've got to go on a day where I'm not scheduled to close or where I'm not, you know, working immediately before. So I'm tired when I get there. But the reality of the matter is she's never not scheduled to either close or to work right before. And if she really liked me that much, she would, it wouldn't matter. She would go to a function after work. And people go to functions after work all the time. She's 20 years old. She can, her body can handle it, you know. Her, she's she's not so exhausted after working that she can't make time for one trivia if she valued my presence. So, you know, it was pretty clear, you know, that hoping for a, a group gathering like my, my friend was suggesting where we would go out to trivia or we would get a karaoke night or something like that together, didn't seem like that was going to happen. And even if it did, it would be such a one-off thing that it wouldn't lead to a lot more, you know, chances for us to, you know, bond. So... So I decided, well, you know, the only way I'm going to be able to spend any significant time with this girl, I just, I, I couldn't get that image of her out of my head. Of, of, you know, I did have stars in my eyes, and he said that's never a good place to come from with girls, and it really isn't. It's probably not a good idea. But so the last day, you know, and the thing that sucks was she was getting hit on at work all the time. A lot of customers were hitting on her, and she was starting to get annoyed with that, you know. And I was just, at one point, I said, oh, it must be hard, you know. And she kind of smiled and looked down, you know, because I think she knew I was making reference to how pretty she was. Um, but that was all I said. It must be hard. And then I finished with, I don't know how you girls did it. Do it. You know, I said generally because I didn't want to, you know, come straight out and say, you know, you're, when you're so pretty, it must be so hard not, not to get hit on all the time or to be hit on all the time. I don't know how you deal with that. I mean, you know, thinking about it now, it's better to be pretty and get hit on all the time than to have no offers at all. So, you know, I guess it's, it's a double-edged sword to some extent, but, you know, or, I mean, it has its pluses and minuses, I guess is what I mean to say. Certainly more pluses than minuses, because being totally ignored is not no fun for anybody. But, um, so, uh, finally, I, th I thought today, I, I, I've got to say something, you know. So, we got to about, she, she had already come in that day and said that she didn't want to be there again, you know, just like the other day. But she said that, you know, she was going to push through for her teammates, because, you know, whatever. She's not the golden employee, I imagine. I thought she was a great cashier, and she's, you know, a very nice person, but... But, but a great cat, she, I mean, she is, does a great job, but she was losing her verb for the job. And it's no surprise this job will kind of take, you know, will, will, you, this job grows old. And I can't believe I had managed to do it for as long as I did, you know, basically didn't have many better options. So that was, but she's doing it as a side gig, you know, while she goes to college. She's just doing it to help, you know, help with her expenses a little bit. So anyway, so we were, I finally had a moment where I was with her um, in the, in the, first two lanes the cashier lanes and I kept waiting waiting for the customer the lines to go down so I'd have a moment to talk with her and finally I got a moment to talk with her and I I went for it as much as I could I said you know and this is a even for me to do that was you know 
was was something to I I guess I you know I'm not wouldn't say I'm proud of myself but you know it was it was about time it was about time that I tried a little so I finally got up the courage to say you know I'm really gonna miss hanging out with you you know and, you know I'm wondering would you be interested in you know maybe getting lunch sometime and I said it as probably you know without any amount of confidence at all I mean I was like well, you know we'd probably be interested in maybe getting some lunch sometime you know I was looking off in the to the side, not even looking directly at her, you know, I could have done it in a much more confident way, um, but I didn't, and, um, you know, I think I said it in a way that was suggestive enough that she knew what I meant, you know, which is, you know, like my friend says, really runs the risk of me looking like a creep, but as far as I could tell, I wasn't going to be seeing her much at all, regardless, so I may as well just, you know, try to make an obvious play, and if I, she sees me as a creep forever, well, I'm not going to see her one way or the other, so what difference does it make, really, you know? Maybe it is a little creepy. And she was already dealing with customers, you know. I think she was dealing with customers one night, and when I made that comment about it must be hard, you know, she said something about how they were, she couldn't believe how audacious they were. And that sounded like a word like, oh, audacious. That You know, she said audacious. That must mean that on some level she respects them for, you know, having the chutzpah to say something. So, um, so you know, I thought that was maybe another coded message that said, oh, you know, I want you to be confident and try, because that'll make you audacious, and that's better than, you know, being timid, so I finally, you know, I, I made the comment, like, maybe, you, you know, would you, would you think you'd be interested in getting lunch sometime, and her response was, sure, you know, just like that, sure, and, you know, then another customer came up quickly after that, and I felt immediately, you know, somewhat like, I needed to give her space immediately because I just laid that on her. And, you know, it might have revealed something about me that I, you know, that, like I said, you know, I'd look like a, a perv to some extent. Maybe if I'd been more confident and hung around. But I decided to go take a little walk and do some things, you know, just so that she didn't feel like I was breathing down her neck. Who knows if that mattered or no. She said, sure, you know, but it was, it didn't seem super genuine. It was sort of like, oh, sure, yeah, we could do that. You know, it was kind of like, you know, it wasn't like, oh, yeah, I'd really like that or something like that. It was, you know, sure, which you know, she said, sure, she didn't say no, you know, which was, you know, initially I thought, well, at least now she knows, you know, it's finally out there, you know, I asked her out to, I asked her to go out to lunch, you know, I don't think there's any two ways about it, I think she understands what that means, that I, I have interest in her in a way, you know, I don't know, maybe she just thinks I'm being friendly, but I, you know, it, there is some, it's somewhat suggestive to ask somebody out to lunch, and my friend told me not to do it, because he said it would, you know, immediately leave creeper vibes, you know. But I did it anyway because I thought, well, you know, I wanted to come back and tell my friend that she, you know, was enthusiastic and that we had planned something. I, I could have asked a more direct question. I could have been like, you know, maybe you'd like to get lunch with me next weekend, you know. That would have been even bolder and probably more pervy, uh, more creepery. So I, I, I did, I, I, it took me all the, all the courage I could have just to muster up, you know, maybe you'd want to go, you know, would you be interested in going to lunch sometime, you know. And, um, you know, after that, I, you know, it was like, I don't think she was, you know, she wasn't cold or mean to me, you know, I helped her bag a bunch and we still talked a little bit about things and almost acted as if I didn't say anything. Um, but you know, it wasn't like she was giving me encouraging signs after she said, sure, you know, it wasn't like, you know, I really got the vibe like she was, you know, really excited about the fact that I asked the question, you know, and, um, I was, you know, for a moment, I was just happy that I asked it because for so long I had never said a word, and so for once I actually said it, you know. And I guess the whole thing at, at that point was, well, what's going to happen when she leaves? You know, this is our last day together. You know, how is this going to play out at the end? Is she going to come and give me a hug goodbye? You know, that's what I was. I, I think a hug goodbye would have been the minimum of what I ex was expecting if I thought that, you know, that what I'd said had landed in any kind of a positive way. But um, the end of the day came, and she just kind of took off when she was ready to take off. No goodbye, no sort of like, it was great working with you, you know. And so that, you know, actions speak louder than words. And the, the action there is, you know, oh, God, you know. Maybe not oh, God, but just kind of like, oh, Tim's got the wrong idea, you know. She might, re I'm sure she, she came to the realization that I had the wrong idea. And um, just sort of said, well, you know, don't want to lead him on, you know. Don't want to make him feel like he has a real shot. So, you know, I'm just going to go, you know. 
my last day. She didn't even say goodbye to me. Not even a goodbye, you know. No hug, no kind of like, this is it. No acknowledgement that it was our last day. She was just gone. So bottom line is, you know, all the all the messages I thought I was getting, all the, you know, all the things I was reading into. I don't know if I had a shot ever, you know. Some part of my mind thinks that the time to act was sooner, and she just saw me at that point. My little timid suggestion that we do something was just, you know, she saw me at that point in the light of somebody who wasn't, you know, wasn't confident enough to go after what he wanted when he first had the shot, you know. If I was more confident, I would have been like, I would have talked about hanging out that night, you know. And if I could have, if I had my own place, I could have said, well, why don't we hang out and watch that movie instead of you and your friend, you know. And, you know, if I had a shot, that was probably it. It was that night, you know. And after that, I'm sure it changed the way she saw me, you know. If, that is, if. And that's only if I ever had a chance at all. You know, probably more likely I never had a chance. And she really did just have break her plan, plan, plans with her friends and never really p was particularly interested in being with me. I, 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 I could have sworn I, I was getting, you know, interested vibes. I thought for a while I was getting interested vibes, but it's really hard to tell now, you know, based on the fact she didn't even say goodbye to me, based on the fact she didn't seem to react at all, other than saying sure in a way that seemed very noncommittal, you know. Um, it wasn't like, you know, I saw her face light up or that, you know, I didn't, wasn't even really looking at her face when she said sure, you know, because I was so embarrassed to ask the question. So, you know, um, you know, this is the fact that she didn't want to encourage me at all by leaving. Either I just came across as too timid this whole time, you know, or, um, or she was never interested in me from the beginning, you know. And at least now I know where I stand. You know, my guess is if we communicate at all, I'd be surprised if I ever saw her or talked to her again. I said that last time, and I did end up seeing her, you know, because she came back to work. But, you know, I am quitting this job, you know. We will not be seeing each other because of work. Um, I don't know if she's planning on coming back to work as a temp or not. She might, because it's an easy job to get back, you know, and so it'd be easier for her to go work that job and go find a new job. But, you know, now that I've said what I said, in all likelihood, she won't be coming to trivia, you know. If she wasn't, if she didn't want to encourage me by giving me a hug goodbye, and, or at least even saying goodbye to me when she left, then she sure as hell isn't going to want to encourage me by coming to trivia. And she wasn't coming to trivia anyway, so why would she, you know? Um, and chances are very small that any other kind of gathering of former work colleagues are just going to come together. It's, it was hard enough getting trivia together, you know. Chances are I'm not going to see her again, and I'm not going to text her, you know. The message was delivered loud and clear, and, uh, you know, regardless of whether or not I ever had a chance at this point, she doesn't she doesn't want to encourage me in those thoughts. And so I'm not going to text her, you know. And chances are, I probably, this time for real, I really don't expect to see her or talk to her again, unless it's, you know, inadvertent, you know. The girl I worked with the first for the first few months at the co-op, um, you know, I thought, well, she lives in town, so maybe I at least see her. I haven't seen this girl the first girl that I talked about that I used to have a crush on back in the early, yeah, when I was making these videos early on and two years ago, it's so long time, too long I was there. First girl I was talking about, I didn't, I, you know, she supposedly lives in the area, but I, I haven't seen her once. It's incredible. And it does seem as if the same thing will happen. This girl will vanish into the ether, you know. Another sad chapter in, in my life of, you know, unrequited love. Um, so it's a sad day for me, you know, I was expecting it to be, you know, even sadder, but, you know, most days I feel like a, a total piece of crap for not at least asking the question, so today I asked the question, and I guess if I was going to give you any advice, it's that, you know, maybe just, you'll feel better about yourself, even if you come across as a perv, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, if she thinks I'm a perv, it's over, we're not talking you know, the only other way I was going to see her is if she came to a trivia, which she wasn't doing, so it wasn't likely. But even if she had come to a trivia, you know, um, chances were not good that our relationship was going to develop much at the trivia anyway. I don't think I had any kind of a long game, you know. Either she was interested or she wasn't to some extent. And, you know, I just think that, uh, you know, I just I got the information that I needed to know. So if you're going to do it, you know, 
I mean, if you're, a, I'd say assess the situation first, you know, look at where you are. I mean, look at where I am. I wasn't expecting to really be successful with a 20 year old girl from the beginning. You know, I have no career. I'm not young anymore. Um, you know, I'm not particularly skilled in anything, you know. I have had very little luck with women, you know. Um, there's not exactly women clamoring to be with me. I always felt like, you know, I was. Uh, sometimes I get some looks at the co-op, and I think the more people get to know me, the more they see me that I'm a, you know, reserved, nice guy. You know, the nice guys do finish last, you know. If anything, if she was ever attracted to me, Lucy, then it was, like I said early on, uh, based on a, a perception of me that is not reality and the reality of me is not an alpha you know, I'm a I'm a beta or one of these other letters I don't know which letter maybe I'm a omega or you know I forget the one that means the total loser I think the omega is the total loser but I'm not an alpha and you know beautiful girls will suss that out it doesn't take too long you know they figure it out I don't know if she even knew maybe she I don't know when she knew I wasn't an alpha you know but I had other things going for me. I was, you know, I was sort of a, a leader in the in the store, and I had, you know, I was her boss, and, uh, you know, I had formed a lot of connections with people. I looked like a central figure. I was a central figure in the co-op for a couple of years, you know. I was important to their day-to-day -day operations, you know, and I'll, I'll continue to be important for the next three days, and then I will drop off the face of the map of the, of the co-op. But, um, you know... Whatever the case, you know, in all likelihood, I wasn't going to speak to her. I wasn't going to interact with her much, regardless of whether or not I said something. You know, if 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 I, if I live, if I'm left, if she's left with a bad taste in her mouth because I asked her to go to lunch at the end, you know, so be it. You know, I can live with that. You know, I just, I, in some ways, I think I feel better knowing that she's not that interested at this point. You know, because I, I I really am the beta. That's what I am. You know, I'm not an alpha and. The real the question was, you know, can she love me for, can she love a beta? Can she love somebody who, you know, isn't one of these uber confident guys? And the answer is sadly. And this is, in some ways it's sad because it just reaffirms all the things that these, you know, that these uh, men's, you know, these, uh, what's they called, the incels, you know, it reaffirms. And these incels, I got to say, you know, it's like a lot of people give them a lot of shit, but when it comes to being perceptive about women, they are. Women like to deny the things that they say because it makes women look bad, but the bottom line is when we follow our biological drives, which we generally do, we look bad, you know, men and women both, you know, just like my shallowness going for pretty girls, you know, this girl was more than just pretty, she was a, seemed like a beautiful person to me, you know, or at least maybe I just was blinded by her looks and assumed that she was a beautiful person. In a lot of ways, I think she is, she's universally beloved by the co-op, so I don't think she's bad, but she's not so, you know wonderful that she could love somebody who wasn't an alpha you know to me that would take a, a, a great person to see deeper qualities than the alpha male qualities that someone who was a little more enlightened but if that's her you know it might be for guys her age but it ain't for for me at least at this point but i have an answer you know so i guess i'd say that you know if you want if you really want to know if you don't want to kick yourself you know a lot of ways you know i would have kicked myself if i hadn't said anything and so, at the very least, I don't have to deal with the self-flagellation of not saying anything. I made my intentions known. I was rebuffed. You know, I can live with that. I mean, I, you know, in, in some ways, it's just as depressing, because it just means that she's, you know, it confirms what I already imagined was the case, you know. But, you know, even though my attempt was as pathetic as it was, even though it came later than it should have, you know, even though it was clear that I wasn't the man maybe that you know I might have looked like in the beginning um, it's better than saying nothing the ultimate beta move would have been or the ultimate omega move would be to just have let it go and not said a word and I said something you know I stood up for myself I I went for what I wanted for once in my life I'm not gonna get it I'm incredibly depressed about it it does feel as if this is closing a window in my mind you know just in my mind in reality the window was already closed but, you know, this was, in my mind, my last chance at a fantasy, last chance at redemption, you know. If I could just be with that girl, you know, a beautiful girl that every guy wants, you know. If I could make a connection with her that was about her appreciating my personality and, you know, 
respecting me for being a good person and for, you know, putting in a good effort at work and, you know, for being friendly with everybody and, you know, creating a, a fun atmosphere and, and um, you know, really caring about my, the customers that I liked at the very least because there were customers that were good customers that I did want to do a good job for and, and appreciated their, you know, appreciated their patronage. Um, but um, I was hoping that maybe that, the you know, that there, I would find a girl enlightened enough to overlook the usual biological need for a guy who was alpha and would just, you know, see my, my, my deeper qualities, my more enlightened qualities and, and appreciate that enough to give me a shot. But that is not going to be, you know, that's Lucy has decided she's, you know, the, the age gap is just probably too great. That's the first thing. The second thing might be just because I'm too timid, you know. I didn't even, you know, I didn't even make a statement, you know, the, even my 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 uh, my proposition to her was weakly stated. I could have done it in a way that was much more confident, you know. But um, she didn't say outright no, you know. I mean, her action said outright no, and actions speak louder than words. So that is the bottom line. And on, to some extent, I feel for, you know, because she was getting harassed with these questions, like I said, with being propositioned over and over again at work, and I just added to it. But the way I felt like it was like, well, at least I'm doing it on the last day, you know. This is the last time you'll get a proposition from me, you know. You don't have, at this from this point forward, you are in no way, shape, or form forced to, you know, to be around me to deal with the fact that that that, that I have these you know this attraction to you um, you know you're free of me after this you know I I did that because I respected her or maybe not respected her but I I didn't want to make her feel uncomfortable I didn't want to make her she said talked about being a captive audience when when people would hit on her and I didn't want to make her a captive audience to me either you know I wanted to give her that escape route and that's what she took and it seems as if she's taken the escape route. And that's fine, you know. I mean, it's not something I'm happy about. But it's it's a sad day, you know. The door is closed in my mind. It was probably never open, or if it was open, it was for a different version of me that doesn't exist in the real world. Um, and I'm just going to have to live with that. And so I'm really not feeling a will to live at all, you know. If I was a braver man, I'd probably just end it all because, you know, if I can't be with a young and beautiful girl, uh, you know, at some point in my life, that was kind of the goal to have, you know, I'm not asking for, you know, a girl to marry me or to be faithful to me forever. I just wanted to have one opportunity with a young and beautiful girl for a period of time, three months, six months, however long I could get. You know, where we had each other and we loved each other and I got to feel what it was like to be really loved and, and cherished by a girl who was pretty. Or that I found attractive. And, and she, this girl is outright attractive. Anyone could... And that's why she gets propositioned at work, obviously. I just wanted to have that for a little while in my life and the door has been shut on that in my mind. You know. I probably won't spend this much time. I'll probably never feel this comfortable with someone as pretty as she was and, and definitely as, as young as she was. And so the real opportunities for me are the things that have always been there that I've mentioned before. Some attractive woman in her 30s. But it's it's just hard, you know. I had chances with girls in my 20s, you know, but I blew them all, you know, and there's no getting those back, you know. Unless I find some girl who's got a real thing for old dudes, you know, which is not too common and not too likely, you know. I think I, I maybe in my 30s I would have had a shot at some of these girls that like older men, but... 40s is a big gap, you know, for a girl in her 20s to date a guy in his, in his 40s. You better be bringing some major, you know, cashola or, you know, be a real leader or figure of you know, oppressive status, you know, in society if you're going to be getting girls that are 20 years younger than you. That's, that's you know, celebrities, rock stars, you know, or whatever, not even rock stars anymore, entertainers, I guess you'd call them now, you know. Even streamers, you know, they're getting a lot of. I'm sure these older, there's some older streamers are probably cleaning up with the young ladies. But you got to be, you know, you got to be a name that everyone knows. You have to be famous, you know. And if you're not famous, then you at the very least have to have some money and be making some bank, you know. 
And even then, you know, there's limits. Like, you know, you could be in your 50s, 60s making bank. It's going to be hard to find a 20-year-old. You might be able to find a 30-year-old, you know, maybe late 20s. But even, even beyond some certain age limits, there's, you know, I think it's impossible even, even for people that are really well off. Unless you're willing to go with a girl who's so shallow that all she cares about is living high on the hog and, you know, only pays you the minimum amount of, of attention and respect in order to keep the, the funds flowing. I don't think that's Lucy. I don't think Lucy is, uh, you know, interested in that kind of thing. She's, you know, a little, unless she's not that shallow. But I think right now she's interested in being with guys who are young and good-looking, like most girls her age are. Young, good-looking, and probably have a, you know, somewhat, um, you know, promising future ahead of them. Whether or not that's, you know, making a ton of money, it should at least be something where, you know, they feel like this person can develop into someone who would be respected and known and loved by a lot of people, or at least have power. You know. In the end, I think the biggest thing that made me unattractive was, well, the age thing is number one, obviously, but number two is I just didn't have any power. And so, you know, you can, I would say, you know, you can, ex you, you can get the courage up to ask a girl, you know, if they're interested, even, you know, even if it seems like a long shot for whatever reason. <coughs> but don't expect it to work out if you're not powerful. Because women want power in the end, you know. It's sad. Either power or looks. It's one of those two. And if it's looks, most of the time they're going to want looks from guys their age, not guys that are much older. Um, and, you know, in a lot of ways, I'm, I'm a hypocrite, you know. So it's no surprise, you know. I should, I should want to be with older women because that's what's appropriate, you know. But I don't. I'll forever mourning my the loss of my 20s you know time that I should have been spending being with beautiful girls that were young when, when it was appropriate for me to be with them and those days are gone you know this was the final straw this was the last curtain call and it really like it wasn't like I said it was already pre-decided I think but I, I hope that I had found an anomaly you know? I hope I'd found a one in a million girl that could that could find me attractive for who I was and uh, it, that didn't end up being the case so I guess I don't know I just wanted to give you sort of a of an epilogue to this whole little saga I think it, 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 just, it spanned about three or four videos it's a nice little subplot in my life even if it has a depressing ending I've gone back to having no will to live really um, the biggest thing keeping me alive is not wanting to you know the fear of death, you know, the, 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 how scary it is, the, uh, the thought of not existing anymore, um, the pain that I would leave behind, you know, I would leave so much pain if I took my life because, you know, and pain for people that don't deserve the pain. My parents don't deserve the pain of having to grieve my, my loss. My, my niece and my sisters don't really deserve the pain. My friends and family, other extended friends and family, you know, I don't have a lot of friends, but mostly family, they, you know, it would be tragic you know, they'd feel bad. I don't want to have that to be my legacy, you know, so I'll continue to slog on, even though I do very little to get excited about my future, as usual. I'm going back to school. That's why I quit the co-op. That's the other big news, I guess, is aside from this whole frivolous thing with the with this girl that was probably always out of my league forever, you know, it was never realistic in reality, unless I was a totally different person, which I'm just not. But, um... As far as the work goes, yeah, I, I quit, you know, because I felt like I wasn't moving anywhere. And, you know, that should be exciting. I should be happy that I'm not working a menial, stupid grocery job anymore that wasn't going to lead to anything really exciting, you know. I was, I was, I was hoping to become a manager just so I could earn enough of a salary that I thought I'd be somewhat, at least, financially secure. It wouldn't have been, I still wouldn't have been financially secure, but it might have been a, a path to more financial security if I'd moved on to work as a manager elsewhere. Um, but now that this is all over, you know, I mean, the plan as stated now is to go back to school for computers yet again. You know, I'm very, you know, um, it's hard to say that I expect to be successful when I haven't been successful. I was, the, the boot camp didn't work out, you know, so why should this work out any better? It's a daunting challenge to get a computer science degree and it may not even be the best path forward for, for tech 
the world of tech because you know they, they say you're probably better off you know building a portfolio or doing something like that. I'd, I'd like to make, you know, I'd like to be a software engineer now more than than be a, a web guy because I really had issues with you know the constant. I felt like the world of web was changing a lot faster, and at least with software engineering, you still got some kind of like solid as a rock programming languages that haven't really changed over many years. C plus plus and Java and uh, Python is used a lot these days, you know. So I wanted to, you know, I, I, my idea is that I can, ha you know, th my idea was that I could handle, you know, a, a less intensive environment. The boot camp was too much information too fast, and I felt like I couldn't keep up and never made a great portfolio because I felt overwhelmed. Um, the idea was that by going to college, it would be a more, you know, measured pace. But now I'm finding out that I have to take two classes of physics in order to transfer to computer science. I got to pass calculus two that I failed the last time I attempted it, and I'm totally rusty on math. I haven't taken a math class since 2009, so I don't even know if I could jump back into, you know. It was a tough, it was, it was hard for me even when I was fully prepared to take calculus two, so how hard is it going to be now, you know. I've got to take, like, I'm going to have to take, like, you know, I have to take five required computer classes. One of the English classes I took in the past, it was a comparative film analysis, and they're probably not going to take it at the new school, so I'll have to take another English class. And it's just all these things, you know. You know, it's there's all these roadblocks in my way. And I think if I, you know, was younger, I could be motivated to get past them, but I really have doubts about my motivation now. Because what is the motivation at this point, you know? I can't be with a young and beautiful girl, you know, it's, I failed, and, you know, by the time I'm done getting a degree, I still won't have a job, I still won't have a career, and it will have been a nice accomplishment to get a degree, but no young girl is going to be impressed with a guy who's in his 40s who finished his, his degree, you know, they might say, oh, good for you, but it's not going to be like, oh, this guy, this guy's hot on the market now, he's, you know, 40, 47, ready to move up in the world, you know, no, nobody is drooling over a 47-year-old, and definitely not some 20-year-old, you know, or 20, 25-year-old even, you know, or 28-year-old even, you know, unless they're totally shallow and think that, you know, just assume that they can make a bunch of money, you know, and I don't really want that kind of love anyway. So I don't know, I've been pouring myself into programming, and I've been doing this Python class on, this Python, uh, I've been trying to get Python certifications on Free Code Camp, which is hardly a great substitute for actually learning to code and doing projects. But they make you do some projects, and I'm finding Chat GPT very useful for analyzing my code and you know telling me where I went wrong and giving me hints and things like that. So I'm trying to keep moving forward, and you know I'm, I should be doing that now instead of making this video. I should be continuing to code, because so I've been putting in fairly consistent on a day-by-day basis. I've been putting in at least, you know, an hour or two of coding, sometimes three, four. Um, maybe I'd say, yeah, I'm more like averaging closer to three hours, I'd say, a day on coding. Um, so I'm making a push right now, but it's, you know, it's standing in my way as physics one and two, calculus two, you know. Um, those are the big things. Can I pass physics at all? Physics was hard in high school. I got to take two physics classes now. And calculus, too, like I said, I couldn't pass when I was in my math prime. Now I'm out of my prime, and I've got to work my way back to passing calculus, too. It's, it's a long path ahead. It's daunting. You know, you think that all the time I put in getting my, my general ed credits back in California, that that would count for something. But it really pretty much counts for half of a one semester. You know, that I've basically saved myself half of a year. I got three and a half years... Well, maybe not three and a half years, but I've got at least a, that's not true. I, I've got, it's, yeah, probably it's like it's something like 30 credits I've got to take, and that's like, that's like six classes, I guess, no, seven, eight, eight classes, something like that. i got eight classes to take. I can only take, you know, it's, it's, I can't take them all at the same time. I can't pass calculus two and physics and, <laughs> and computer programming classes at the same time, you know, it's just overwhelming. The amount of stress I'm taking on, you know, it's, I don't deal well with stress, you know, so I'm feeling totally untethered. I was gung-ho to go back to school and to make something of myself, you know, after I thought, oh, well, this is great motivation, you know, I wasn't appreciated here, you know, I didn't, I got passed over for a promotion, um, you know, I'll show them, you know, I'll show them, I'll get my 
computer science degree and I'll and I'll you know make something of myself and that'll be my revenge you know I've learned how to work here that's what I say to myself you know when I first quit like I've learned how to work here I'll just take that same attitude to you know to college but you know the stress the stress of working the job that I was working it's stressful you know no question about it but it's a different kind of stress than what college pushes you through the kind of stress college pushes you through is the stress that involves time management you know I don't really need to manage my time particularly well at the co-op you know I just you know you get into a routine you do the routine consistently day in day out you know it's not it's not the hardest job in the world it's you know I mean it was challenging don't get me wrong it's still a hard job I think but it's a hard job in a way that it's a hard job that anybody can do but passing physics one and two you know getting a B I think I have to get a B in calculus if I'm going to go to UMass I don't know if I really happen to me to even go to UMass or not but but um you know, trying to balance the course load of, of three intense courses simultaneously. I don't know how people do it. You know, I don't know if I'm capable of, of dedicating that much time to studying and pushing through these roadblocks. You know, I'm finding myself in an extremely scary proposition where I just, you know, I, the job I was doing wasn't helping me much, but, you know, the path forward looks daunting. It looks almost impossible. People will tell me, you can do it, you can do it, you know, but my history is not that I can do it, and that history looms large right now, and I'm struggling with, you know, I, I almost feel like in a way I'm going back just to fuck around for a while, and I don't want to do that, but it's like, you know, I get the feeling I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to sign up for classes this summer, I was planting pre-calc again, I took, I had to take pre-calc before, I'm taking it again to get back into the swing of things. And a writing class. Let's see if I can get the writing class out of the way. They didn't take my English class. I thought. Let's see if I can get my writing class. They might still take the comparative film studies. They haven't really analyzed my transcript yet. But, but um, so yeah, maybe I won't have to do the writing class. But if I have to take pre-calc, you know, it's like, it's it's a good little stepping stone for me this summer to just have a, a accelerated pre-calc class get me back in. I don't have to get a great grade at it. Hopefully, maybe I could even audit the class. That would be nice. I don't know if that's going to be possible. I have to talk to the teacher. But, um, you know, once we get into the thick of it, once we get into the, the fall semester, you know, if I have to have take, you know, calculus one, physics one, you know, a programming class, you know, that's what it would probably be calculus one, physics one, and a programming class. And really, I should be taking two programming classes if you keep the standard workload. Most people take, you know, 18 credits, I think is maybe 15 to 18 credits is about average. That's about three credits per class it means you got to take at least, or sorry, four credits per class or something like that. I think it means you got to take four classes to get up there, you know. So if I was taking a normal workload at my age, I should be expected to, you know. I, the dilly-dallying should be over by now. Um, if I'm taking, you know, if I'm taking physics and, I mean, just, just think about that. Physics, calculus two, or sorry, calc, even if I was taking calc one, which I probably will have to retake calc one to even have a chance of getting into calc two. So... Um, physics, Calc 1, two programming classes, you know, at minimum. It's, it's, it's just a lot, you know. It's a lot. I don't know how you people do it, you know. I'm always I'm consistently amazed at how people push through these kinds of boundaries, you know. Could I get C's in these classes? I guess that's what I need, you know. If I get C's, I'm not going to UMass anymore, but I was never probably UMass material anyway. I should probably go where I'm best have a chance of finishing my degree, even if it's, you know, a school no one's ever heard of, Westfield State. You, know, you don't know Westfield State unless you live in this area. It's the only way you're going to hear of Westfield State. No one's going to be impressed with Westfield State on my resume, but I guess a degree is a degree, and, you know, I have to accept what I'm capable of. So, if I can get a degree at all, it'll be Westfield State, but, you know, I don't know if I'm cap capable of passing. I have no idea if I'm capable of passing a physics class. I've never been good at physics. I had one physics class in high school and I failed. I don't know if, it, if there's any way I'm going to be capable of passing a physics class, a calculus class, and a and two programming classes. You know, the amount of time management that requires basically means I have to be doing nothing but work. It will be work, work, work. No more playing cards. No more leisure time. No more time to watch Jeopardy on TV. Or if I do watch Jeopardy, it's one Jeopardy and then off to work, you know, and 
get your work done. It's, you know, an, an incredibly difficult subject across the board. Programming is hard, you know, physics is hard, calculus is hard. These are hard things, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a huge amount of climb. If I was younger, I could afford to do what I did before and slow play it and take 10, 11 credits, you know, per semester and withdraw every time, any time my grades were threatened and probably make it. You know, as it stands with what's expected of me, you know, I feel like I'm in trouble. I don't know if I'm fi if I'm capable of doing this, but we're gonna start off this summer. We'll start off fairly easy. At least I get a little break here. But last time I took a little break, it turned into five years of me not really working, and it was pathetic. And I'm worried that the same thing's gonna happen this time. Uh, or I'm worried that I'm just going to try and fail and give up, and then end up having to crawl my way back to a, another shitty retail job. Um, there's a, always a possibility of that. I don't know. I would love to have, after what I experienced at my job, I'd love to have the power to, you know, know that if I worked hard, I was going to be appreciated for it. You know, the only way that happens is if you have skills. If you have really, you know, valuable skills, and if you work hard, you will be appreciated for it in the terms of how much you get paid. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying for this thing, this, this degree that isn't even, you know, widely considered necessary for for being successful in the world of tech, you know, I, mean, I feel like in some ways I'm being stupid, but in other ways I just feel like, you know, going back to school is better than going to work, you know, at work you get disrespected, you get taken advantage of, you get taken for granted, um, you know, they constantly add, ro add work to your role, they, you have to deal with short staffing, you know, in the world of retail and, you know, entry level work, it's hard work. But it's hard work in a way that it's it's not so much hard in terms of the actual effort required. It's it's hard because you know you you feel so powerless all the time. It's that feeling of powerlessness that kills you. And so going back to school is going to feel better than being powerless. But in some ways I'll still feel powerless because here I am, 44 years old, going to school. You know, doubtful that I'll be able to succeed, and wondering if the degree I'm trying for is even worth getting. So, yeah, I'm really afraid, um, and I'm hoping that um, I'll somehow find a way to be motivated. And what's the motivation, you know? Maybe I can get a girl who's 35 years old who's fairly decent looking. That's the motivation. Maybe she has kids. Maybe she's slept through, you know, been through the ringer, slept through every guy you can think of. That's what I'm, that's the big goal now, some hot 35-year-old girl who stays in half decent shape you know and uh you know it's not a terrible goal i mean there's beautiful 35 year old girls it's beautiful even you know it could even go as low as you know the low 30s potentially um not to say there aren't beautiful women at that age but you know given the all the obstacles in my path to even you know those girls even those girls in their 30s who are still really good looking you know um they're still looking, if they're really good looking, they're still looking for somebody who's got some status, you know. So the only way I'm getting to them is if I succeed and actually get a job and actually make at least, you know, eventually six figures, you know, probably. You know. And I just wonder, am I capable of that? I don't know. I have my doubts. So, yeah, just I guess that's it. There's nothing much else for me to say. I just want to say, you know, this is sort of a two-part video. One part is, you know my travails and, and, and failures at, at, at trying to make, you know, get the things that I want in terms of, of a woman. And the other part of it is, um, you know, it's sort of an instructional video, I guess, for people who are in my position, beta males who are not sure whether to say something. I guess well, I'll leave you with this. Go ahead and say something, you know, because there's really not a lot of, I feel better having said it than not, you know. Maybe I've, I left that girl with a bad taste in her mouth, but at least I have the knowledge that I need. To know that you know it was never meant to be somehow even though it, the reality of that it, fact that it wasn't meant to be is sad it feels better than second guessing yourself so i'd say if you can make a move even if it's a timid bs move that comes too late go ahead do it you know do it because you know it's better to know in the long run than to speculate um but otherwise um you know i'll, I'll let you know if i ever hear from her again if I had to, so if I was a betting man, which sometimes I am, but not most of the time, um, I would probably put, you know, I would put at least five thousand dollars on the possibility that I won't be talking to her again, you know, 
for at least another, I don't know, probably never. There's a good chance I'll never talk to her again. I don't know if I put $5,000. There's always a chance that something, I don't know if she'll ever contact me again. But at this point, the ball's in her court forever. You know, I'm not going to say anything else to her. Because uh, she's made it clear with her actions that she's not interested in me in the way that I am interested in her. And that's fine. You know, it's disappointing, but I can live with it. So yeah, uh, if you're if you're wondering whether to say something, I think it's still worth it to say something. Not by a lot, you know. You'll, you'll probably find out that the answer you get isn't what you want to hear. But say it anyway, you know, because you only get so many chances to say it. You never know. You could get lucky. It's possible there are one in a million odds are against you, though. Um, and as far as my career is concerned, yeah, I just want to let you know another update. Not like you give a fuck about my boring ass life, but. If you're interested at all, just know that, uh, yeah, huge change afoot. No longer working as the co-op, you know, that path is over. In some ways, it's good. In other ways, I'm scared shitless.